Good morning, traders. I'm Dennis Dick, and this is Pre-Market Info. On today's show, this is HFT Friday, and we're going to be talking about all kinds of different high-frequency trading programs. The news algos, they battle it out in earnings season. Uh, and Google, CMG, and Microsoft, GE reports, and it's volatile after earnings. We're also going to be talking about some crazy algorithmic charts, sawtooth charts, and Coke, McDonald's, and IBM as this time-based algorithm makes its mark. And has the S&P futures made a double top at 1376? Let's analyze the tale of the tape. Looking at Google's earnings there yesterday, right before report, and this is what I'm going to talk about. You've got a lot of high-frequency traders, um, and you have new high-frequency traders coming on board all the time. And to be honest with you, some of these high-frequency trading programs just aren't very good. You have a lot of traders, high-frequency traders, trying to trade the news on a lot of issues. And what you have here, at, at 4.01 yesterday, Google releases earnings. So actually, it's at 4.01.22, Google releases earnings. So you can see just before, it's kind of choppy trade, just trading around 5.90, 600, kind of all over the place. But then all of a sudden, releases earnings. I'm going to show you right here. You can just see the tape. Well, actually, it's at 4.01.18. I think it's released here right now. So you can see here, this is the tape from yesterday, just analyzing it. And the stock's kind of all over the place. There's not much liquidity. A lot of high-frequency programs don't like to provide liquidity because there's a lot of risk at this time. But there is some news algorithm, some other high-frequency traders that are more aggressive, and they want to trade the news. So you have a couple of different ones, and, and they don't always interpret it correctly. And what happens is some algorithm sells Google off on the report all the way down to a low of 585.66. So it sells it all the way off, selling all these trades down here in the low 580s. But then immediately another news algorithm picks it up and they think the report's better. So one's interpreted as good, one's interpreted as bad. So the stock starts rallying immediately and look at it take off, boom, boom, all the way up to 615, 19 seconds later. So in 19 seconds, this stock traded as low as 581 and traded all the way up to $615, just 15, 18 seconds later. So you can see it's really volatile, and then it continues to rally, and Google actually keeps popping, and the next 15 or 20 seconds, as you can see, rallying, rallying, rallies all the way back to up to 624. So it gets all the way up to there, and then starts to sell off a bit. If we analyze the tape in CMG, which reported Chipotle, which we reported yesterday, uh, last night as well. Around the same time, you can see similar charting pattern. Not much happening before the earnings report, but then at 4.01, the earnings re report is released. Stock pops immediately to 4.17. There's no liquidity. We're talking a couple hundred shares, a few hundred shares. So whatever news algorithm is, it just thinks it's a good report and it buys it immediately, trades up to 4.15 or 4.17, and then immediately, look, in the same seconds, it's already trading down to 4.01. 48 and 395 and now in the next few seconds it starts to sell off and it starts to sell off hard going down to 375 so here we are we've had a, a total time span of 50 seconds and the stock trade up to 417 and all the way down to 375 the sell-off continues as these uh, algorithms just push the price around with very little liquidity and the stock actually continues to fall it bounces around this morning actually it's really getting killed so uh, chipotle's down over 68 points here this morning uh trading down at 336 as you can see now but it's crazy action here off these earnings reports as you have these news algorithms just trying to interpret what the news is and some quite frankly are reading it wrong whichever algorithm bought this thing up at 417 did not read the report very well because it wasn't good and the stock tanked after that microsoft had a similar story it wasn't quite as quick but the same thing type of, of trading happened where you've got the stock actually spiking initially so here you go news releases i'm just going to try to find the time here for you news release at 
40121. Stock immediately spikes. Look at it take off. Somebody sweeps the book. Some news algorithm sweeps it all the way up to 3104, buying over 10,000 shares right up here at the peak of it. But then, boom, it's trading all the way back down to 3022, 3015. So, whatever algorithm bought it up there got hurt as well. Now, later on, Microsoft does indeed rally. But as you can see, as they try to interpret these news releases, you have one algorithm thinking it's good, another one thinking it's bad. So, one buys it up, one sells it down and the tape is all over the place. Stock goes up to 3104, immediately trading back down 3015, 3020, trading down here. Crazy action. Actually, Microsoft spikes all the way down if we just speed up the tape a little bit, down to 2979. That's the low. And then it starts to take off and then it starts to rally. 3021, 3021. And as you can see, it hangs out here for a little bit, but as it moves higher, a few minutes later, 3051, 3075 continues to rally. Gets up over 31 and gets it in the mid 31s just seven minutes later. So here's a buck and a half range on Microsoft after. After the earnings report as well. Crazy, crazy, crazy action in after these earnings reports. Now just looking here, I'm just gonna start I'm just gonna bring you to today's trade obviously here. Uh, GE reported here this morning. Had a similar move. We spiked up uh, just off the earnings release. I'm not going to show you the tape here, but we spiked up off the earnings release to as high as 2012. Uh, and actually traded up there for quite some time. So it wasn't this uh, spike up, spike down thing that we've seen in the other stocks. But it has actually uh, come down since that time. GE is now trading down at 1963. So there's definitely some head fakes, a lot of, of movement after these earnings reports. And we're seeing even more movement on some of them sometimes. Just because, like I was saying, high frequency traders for the most part aren't providing liquidity, especially after hours, is even less of them providing liquidity because there's a lot of risk. And a lot aren't providing into the news. So when you get these news algos coming in, there's just no liquidity for them to extract from the market. So the price moves very 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 quickly and that's what we kind of seen here yesterday and, and and GE this morning we've seen it as well as GE's trade as high as 2012 now down trading at 1962 uh, I want to highlight some crazy charts yesterday too though and uh, a few different stocks here. I'm just gonna have to bring up a daily for you here bear with me one second as I change my chart uh, I want to show these actually Sal Harnick tweeted this out and it was said later on on uh, on CNBC but uh, look at this chart in coca-cola this is the craziest looking chart this is yesterday's intraday chart of coca-cola and I'm also going to show you yesterday's chart of McDonald's and yesterday's chart of IBM these are crazy looking charts you just don't see this type of stuff and what uh, the media is saying and what I kind of agree with I think the media is actually getting this right it's some type of time-based algorithm that was going yesterday and we're not talking about a high frequency trader here we're talking about an institution that's probably accumulating stock at certain periods of time like this is a crazy looking chart stock rally sells off stock rally sells off stock rally sells off stock rally sells off now if you look what's interesting is actually it seems to bottom on the on on the hour so at 10 o'clock the stock rallies for a half an hour spikes and then sells off for the next half an hour 10:30 to 11 then at 11 o'clock rallies again up to 11:30 and then sp sells off and down to 11:30 makes a low up to 12 o'clock down to 12:30 it, it's a low at 1 o'clock and again, uh, it, goes out, it goes up for the next half an hour, and then at 1.30, starts to sell off again. Gets down at 2 o'clock, starts to rally again. So right on the hour. So it's some type of time-based algorithm where they were coming in and buying the stock on the hour. And I don't know if they're the same ones selling it off on the half hour or not. Or maybe it's just the fact that they're buying it just for the first half an hour, and then selling pressure comes and drives it down, and then they come in buying it again. Not sure exactly what that algorithm is. It's probably not going to be around today because obviously I think everybody's got a glimpse of that something's going on here. And there's a lot of traders. You can actually see that the spikes actually get less and less as the day goes on as traders are anticipating it now. So earlier on, nobody's discovered this. Later on, as they anticipate it, you've got traders basically buying and offsetting it, and then the volatility isn't quite as much. Same story as if we look at the chart of IBM yesterday, which is really interesting because IBM had earnings, so it was pretty volatile too but same type of thing 10 o'clock stock bottoms spikes up at 10 30 to the high sells off for the next half an hour at 11 o'clock starts to rally at 11 30 starts to sell off at 12 o'clock starts to rally at 12 30 sells off <laughs> it's just ridiculous at one o'clock
starts to rally, 1.30 sells off. 1.30 or, or 2 o'clock rallies, 2.30 sells off. 3 o'clock rallies, 3.30 sells off. The whole day. So good for you if your trader's finding this early and making some money off of it because uh, this is a ridiculously predictable chart pattern. So, and like I said, I don't think this algorithm is going to be doing this in this stock today. So I don't think oh, if I buy it on the hour and sell on the half hour, I'm going to make a lot of money. I don't think it's going to be doing it again today because whatever institution is running that algorithm probably realizes that a lot of people were anticipating their moves and making money off them. So highly doubt that that will be running today. One more which had it, though, was McDonald's. And McDonald's, similar story, where it was uh, 10 o'clock. It, it bottoms here around 10, rallies for a half hour, sells off. At 11 o'clock, starts to rally again. 11.30, sells off. 12 o'clock, starts to rally again. 12.30, sells off. 1 o'clock, starts to rally again. 1.30, sells off. 2 o'clock, starts to rally again. 2.30, sells off. 3 o'clock, starts to rally again. And then kind of as you see later on the day, the trades, are, it's, it, it's traders are anticipating it now. The volatility is muted as traders are taking the opposite side and getting, trying to get in front of it and, and then obviously try to work out of their position. So the volatility becomes a little more muted as, as the traders have now anticipated the move later in the day. Kind of the same thing in Pepsi, but not quite as much, uh, not quite as defined, where you've seen this rally, sell off, rally, sell off, rally, sell off. The only ones I really see, and somebody was saying it was an Apple too. I don't see it as much in Apple. You can see it a bit 10 o'clock, 10.30 sell off, 11 o'clock, 11.30 sell off, 12 o'clock, 12.30 sell off, 1 o'clock, 1.30. So I guess it's there, but definitely not as defined as this Coke chart, which is just absolutely ridiculous. And the IBM chart as well. Crazy, crazy, crazy charts yesterday. Algorithms gone wild here on pre-market info. Obviously the news, the high-frequency traders trading the news, uh, much different than these algorithms, institutional algorithms, that are just trying to accumulate stock. So there's a big difference there, but it's all in this new algorithmic trading world that we are in. Let's get to today's trade just for you guys who are trading today. What I wanted to highlight here on the ESU2, on the E-mini here, we'll bring out the chart. We did potentially put in a double top here yesterday. Now we have had this, you know, we've been talking about this channel. We're obviously still in the channel. This is the lower end of the range. This is the upper end of the range. The stock, the overall market has been channeling for the last month and a half. But yesterday, if you look at the high back on May the 5th, we topped out at 1375. That was the high of the move. That's the high for the last three months. Now if we look yesterday, we top out at 1376, so just a point above there, and now we've peeled back a bit and we're actually down nine points in the pre-market. So if you're a technician, you're looking at this saying, oh, there's a potential double top here. So until it takes out that 1376, that pricing uh, is still intact there, and you could say this is possibly a bearish signal that this market might be double topping. So that's something to think about. If the market goes into rallies, I think some traders are going to be highlighting this, and I would expect you to see some resistance in this whole 1375 1376 area if we do continue to rally now we're down at 1363 so if the sell-off continues keep an eye on the uh, on the lower end of the channel obviously I can just draw this a little bit further here for you but if the channel does continue uh, I'm not drawing it very well but if the channel does continue uh, the lower end of the range is probably around 1343, 1344. So we could pull back here another 20 S&P points, and this whole channel, upward channel, would rally would still be intact. So keep that in mind if you're trading the E-mini futures. So, and overall, just to give you numbers on GE, because I know a lot of our traders are going to be trading GE today. Obviously, the pre-market high, which I was talking about earlier, is 2012. It's still moving down. I want you traders to keep an eye on this whole 1943, 1944, 1946 area. This has bottomed out multiple times here in the past. We're only eight cents away from there right now at 1956. So you could get a little bit of a lift. If we do flush through this 1936 low, which was on July 12th, I think we could see 19 bucks. So don't think, you know, just that this is going to hold in stone. Make sure you have your stop. And don't place physical stops. We've talked about that in the past. Have mental stops because you place physical stops. The high frequency traders try to trigger everything. They'll try to move the price to, to hit your stop. Even on a stock like GE, 
the, they control the price very, very well intraday. Now, off the hop, they don't because there's going to be a lot of crazy volatility. But when this thing settles in midday intraday trade, they can move the price around three or four cents to try to get you stopped. Don't think they can't. So I never, it's never a good idea to place physical stops. But regardless, keep an eye on that 1936 low that we did set July the 12th. We take that out, we could be heading to $19 or even to this double bottom that we had at 1890. Uh, that's our show for today, folks. I hope all this algorithms um, has given you a little bit of, uh, and, and not, not. <laughs> I hope I'm somewhat, in, and I'm trying to keep you guys encouraged here, just showing you that the high frequency traders aren't perfect. Some of these news high frequency traders make mistakes. Not all these algorithms are perfect. There is ways to still make money in this high frequency trading world, but you just have to be cognizant of all the players that you're trading against. Once again, I'm Dennis Dick, and this is Pre-Market Info.